So I'm going to start to tell you about the AISA project. Um, this was or is why it is, still is, I'll tell you maybe later in the Q&A session. I'm going to tell you about the AISA project. This was a, was a joint research project. Um, you will see the partners on the right side. So Elobo was involved, um, the um, University of Hohenheim uh, was involved, the Agriculture Institute for Engineering, and the IKTD from the University of Stuttgart was also involved. Um, the AISA stands for Adaptive Interface System in Agriculture Tractors, and I'm going to show you today. Um, I'll prepare a little agenda. I'm going to walk you through this um, very briefly. So the idea, first the idea and the motivation for the project, why we actually did this. Um, then the ergonomics, it, this was a user-centric development, so the ergonomics behind the project. And then in the last chapter, the third chapter, the results. How does the multifunction armrest look like and what are the adaptive functions? So to begin, we got a tractor in the middle of the slide. This is a tractor from Same Deutz Fahr. It's a 9340 TTV. We had this tractor as our test tractor in the research project. And to just start from the same point for everyone, um, we will just do a definition, a short definition of a tractor to know where we are starting. So a tractor is a mobile working machine to earn money. Um, it is for universal use in agriculture, forestry, and also on construction sites. Um, if you would drive on the highway, you often see tractors on construction sites. Um, and this is why they have a very uh, big variety of implements that are coupled to the tractor. You see just a, a bunch of them. Not every, every implement is covered in that slide, but you would see plows, you would see um, cultivators, you would see balers, you would see spreaders, loading wagons, seeding machines, and so on and so on. And the issue is that the tractor has a static operator system for all possible operating scenarios. And that was our starting point So um, for the research project. And to get an even more detailed understanding of a tractor, I brought this picture with me. So the idea, um, to, to more support the idea, um, to first know what are actually the functions that need to be operated on the tractor to earn money with a tractor, we will have a look at the back of the tractor. For sure, there is also the air condition and the radio that needs to be operated, but you will not earn money with the air condition or the radios. You would just earn money with following four main function groups on a tractor. The first one is driving. So you need to drive a tractor, but this is not only driving like you would know it from your passenger car. Um, there is even more functions to it on a tractor. Then you would have the PTO. That's the abbreviation for power take off. Uh, you would have a PTO um, at least in the back of a tractor. Some tractors also do have a PTO in the front um, to mechanical for mechanical uh, driving of the implement of coupled implements. Then you would see a three point hitch in the back of a tractor, usually also in the front of a tractor, to couple implements. And then the uh, fourth um, main function is the hydraulics. Uh, you would see hoses that are coupled to the uh, valves on the back of the tractor. Here you see uh, six hoses that are coupled to three valves on the back of the tractor. You would also see hydraulic uh, valves for sure on the front of uh, tractors. And here is the operator system. The operator system um, of that Same Deutz Fahr tractor um, that's still state of the art. Um, and all the things I'm going to tell you about that operator system right now are also comparable to operator systems from Fendt, from John Deere, from Glass, or whatever tractor uh, brand you would um, imagine. So um, a little bit unique maybe is the, the very colorful design of that armrest on that Same Deutz Fahr tractor. Uh, you would see green coloring, you would see uh, orange coloring, you see blue and yellow. Um, we will start with the orange coloring. All the orange color, uh, coloring is for driving the tractor. All the green coloring is for the three-point hitch on the back of the tractor, sometimes also on the front. Um, even here, that's also the reason why you see two hitch wheels on the very right side of the armrest. Uh, that's the reason uh, you would see that there is also a three-point uh, controlled with a feedback loop, a controlled uh, uh, three-point hitch in the front and in the back. Um, and then you would see uh, yellow, the, the yellow colored up, um, control elements for the PTO, the power takeoff. And then you see the blue uh, control elements for the hydraulics. 
Um, what you also see on that um, tractor armrest for that uh, explanation, I would just switch one slide back again. So uh, here in that example, the cult a cultivator. Um, a cultivator is coupled to the tractor, and there, as I already mentioned, there are six hoses coupled to three valves on the back of a tractor. So um, the first issue that came up with state-of-the-art operator systems, the degrees of freedom when coupling a hydraulic system. So the first degree of freedom is for the farmer, which valve he actually is taking to couple, I don't know, unfolding or folding the cultivator. Um, there are, on this tractor, for example, there are six valves on the back of the tractor he can choose from. Um, and the second degree of freedom is in what direction he actually couples the hoses. So there is one hose bringing the hydraulics to the implement and one hose bringing the hydraulic fluid back to the tractor. Um, and depending on that, um, you can actually then enter the tractor cabin and choose from, let's let's do the do the math, one, two, three, four, five, and then there's a little joystick on the right. There's also another three hydraulic valves you can you can control. Um, you can choose out of eight, eight control elements and just try which control element is actually uh, the right one to control the valve on the back of the tractor because the operator system doesn't tell you that state of the art, it doesn't tell you which control element actually belongs to folding or unfolding the cultivator. It either does it neither tells you um, which uh, in which way you need to actually operate the control element to unfold or fold the, the, the cultivator. If you imagine folding a cultivator, um, then you would ima imagine the cultivator is going up, the, the, the rings of the cultivator are going up, so you'd actually um, expect the control element to go up, and if you unfold the, the rings of the cultivator, you would actually um, expect the, uh, the control element to go down. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case in that way. It could also be unfolding, like going down, and you push the control element upwards, and folding, like going up, and you push the control element downwards. So this is incompatibilities you would see on that state-of-the-art operator system. Um, so that is the, the starting point where we actually came up with this idea. Uh, this was back in 2017 where we started this project. Um, so the idea was you would see the tractor in the middle and the tractor is surrounded by a plow, by a cedar, by a mower, baler and so on. Um, and then you would see adaptivity features of operating elements. And this adaptivity features can be the linked function. So it's not only the same functions for one control element all the, all the time, but it changes. Then you would see color and graphic. You see position and you see availability. So to sum up, the objectives were to develop an adaptive operator system for tractors, for sure, we heard about that, to ensure that the operator system offers the best operability in each scenario. So operability is part so with functionality plus operability, you get the usability. And to use the adaptivity features I already mentioned, linked function, availability, color graphic, and av availability. So this was our idea. Um, and now I'm going to tell you some, some ergonomics background, the, the background in ergonomics. Why is this uh, advantageous uh, for the user or for the driver at all? Um, so on the left graphic, um, on the left column on the slide, you would see the state of the art. Uh, we see the tractor, we see the cultivator, we see the control armrest in a schematic, a schematic way, and you would see the driver. And we already heard that the control armrest is static. So it doesn't, it does not adapt to the coupled implement. In this example, the cultivator. So we have the same armrest all the time, and that's the reason why the, in the the driver has to have an inner model. That's the inner animation you see, the inner model, and in that inner model, he needs to transfer the static control armrest to the actually coupled implement. Um, that's the reason, uh, that's from the examples what I already told you. He, he All the time he needs to be aware of which out of that eight control elements for the uh, eight hydraulic valves in the back are actually, uh, or which one of that is for the folding or unfolding of the cultivator because the, the, doesn't, the operator system doesn't tell him that. He also needs to have the inner model um, to always 
have in mind, okay, if I want to unfold, like the rings going down of the cultivator, I need to push the button upwards. That's also incompatible, and that's why he, he needs to have that inner model all the time, and he's loaded with stress. So what are we going to change now? Um, the idea is to bring that into uh, to deload, uh, to reveal um, the user from that uh, inner model in, the, in a way that we make the implement change the control armrest in a way that you would see the indicator has another symbol now. The indicator tells, hey, it's not control element, it's not hydraulic valve one, but hey, I am unfolding or folding the cultivator. And also the control element, the position of the control element changes in a way um, that for uh, upwards, like unfolding, um, uh, like folding the cultivator, the wings going up, uh, you would press the, the control element upwards and for unfolding the wings of the cultivator going down, you would press the control element downwards. So that's the ergonomics behind it. Um, there's also a lot of standards that uh, still um, support this idea and the ergonomics I already told you about. So um, I brought one, um, it's out of the standard uh, 90, 9241, ergonomics of human system interaction. Um, I'm not gonna read out all this, what I I'm, I'm have here, it's just to show you that this is um, actually written in that standard. I'm rather gonna show you that with some pictures. So what this standard in chapter 4.3 says, um, that a human system interaction needs to be a task appropriate. Um, this is um, turning, um, taking the PTO as an example. Uh, so in the future, we'll, we will not longer turn on or turn off the PTO. Instead, we will turn on or turn off the baler. That's task appropriate. We not control the technology anymore, but we control the function. Then the second one, um, it's out of the standard safety of machinery, conformity of, to expectations. So. Every human being is popular, is based on stereotypes. Um, that's what you learn in your childhood when growing up. Uh, so, for example, an easy an easy example is the the volume uh, rotary switch on a radio. Um, if you want to increase the volume, and you expect first you expect the rotary switch, and then you expect the rotary switch to be turned left uh, to, to be turned right to increase the volume, and to be turned left to decrease the volume. Um, if I'm going to tell you that now, it's all easy and it's like a piece of cake, uh, so to say. Uh, but um, being in the practical way, this is an example from a Dacia car. Uh, so with the, the car pool from our university, uh, I was working before Elobau, has Dacia cars. And the uh, and, and infotainment system or radio entertainment system of the Dacia cars looks like it is shown in this picture. Um, and if you imagine you want to decrease or increase um, the volume all of a sudden, um, let me let me uh, ask you which to which um, control element are you actually going to decrease or increase the volume? Um, I could tell you um, from a, from my perspective, it was all the time the rotor switch in the middle. But on this infotainment system, the rotor switch in the middle is to change the frequency of the radio stations. On the very left side, on the column on the very left side, you would see two buttons for increasing or de decreasing the volume. That's not your expectation, that's not your stereotype. And even, even if I'm doing the, the mistake all the time, in another stress situation, that's also what the standard actually says, you would fall back into the stereotype. So again and again, you would always, in a stress situation, you would always grab the rotary switch and you want to turn it to the left to decrease the volume if there is a challenging uh, situation in the traffic, for example. So that's another example from that. And then a third one, I brought this model um, that was from a publication back in the university. Um, it's always, if you are designing um, operator system, it's always a big, very big, big question. Is it intuitive? And for that, um, you would actually first need to answer the question, what is actually intuitive? Um, and can a track to be intuitive in a way that you just ask a random person walking along the pathway um, in a city, um, please sit in the tractor and start uh, using the tractor. And if he, if that person cannot challenge, uh, cannot um, complete that, uh, uh, complete um, to to just uh, start the tractor, and the tractor is not intuitive. No, that's not a written answer. The correct answer. 
For the correct answer, you need to know that the tractor is a complex machine. The complexity needs to be there to have a good usability. And that's the reason, that's the, the things I told you before. Usability is the part of functionality and operability. So the tractor needs to have that complex functionality, functionality that he can that it can be used in all scenarios like mowing like uh, loading wagon and you you all on before and that's the learning time tf um, tf for functionality uh, you would see that arrow and this is all based on the population stereotypes i told you before like you you expect uh, for increasing or decreasing um, a rotary switch and turning to the right to increase and turning to the left to decrease and based on that for example you know a passenger car vehicles and if you know if you're familiar with driving a passenger car you would expect a steering wheel you would ex expect acceleration uh, acceleration padding a clutch paddle pedal um, a braking pedal and if you're going to a truck or a tractor you would also see a steering uh, steering wheel and you would also see acceleration pedal etc so this is familiar with you so there has um, there's a certain um that's a common, uh, common, common operating operate control elements in a car and in a tractor. But you would also, and that's what's showing in this graph, um, the tractor has more functions like a three-point hitch or hydraulics. A passenger car has no three-point hitch, no PTO, no hydraulics. So you also need to know these functionality. And if you're then on the end of the tractor section, then you need, then you know all the functions of a tractor. And if you know all the functions in the tractor, then it comes to intu intuitiveness. So if you then sit in a tractor, um, and based on your stereotype and knowing about all the functions, and then if you can start right away, like uh, hit the ground running, if you enter the cabin, so to say, um, then it's intuitive. Um, and it's also intuitive, you would see tractor one, T1 and tractor two, um, and the learning time is TB for operability, that's the German word Bedienbarkeit, that's why this, there's the index B. Um, so tractor one has a better operator system based on the stereotypes. That's why it, uh, Tractor 1 has a, a more worse um, operator system than Tractor 2 based on the stereotypes. And that's why it is not that intuitive as Tractor 2. And for sure, another concept is for, for another um, Tractor manufacturer, for, for example, Tractor T to Tractor N has the same operator system all the time. And that's the reason why you can easily switch from Tractor with a high, from a high range Tractor to a low range Tractor and don't need any additional additional time to get um, the to get to know the operator system of a tractor. So that's also the reason why uh, to to distinguish between uh, functionality and intuitiveness of a tractor and to understand can a tractor be intuitive for every just random person you would meet in the uh, downtown in the city. And then um, I will show you the way to the results to our adaptive multifunctional control armrest. How do we how did we do that? Um, so we started with measurements. We've been in the field with the test tractor from Sama I already mentioned that. Um, we've been um, in the field with 14 operating scenarios. You would see pictured on that slide and with more than 500 working hours. And in this, in this field measurements, we track the canvas signals uh, with a vector um, GL logger. Um, so we actually have been aware of each control input um, the user made. We didn't ask the user how often did you control that and that in, um, control element. We measured it. So we have the exact number. And then I'm going to show you on the example of that horse cultivator. We got to low this cultivator a few slides before. You remember the picture with the back of the tractor um, where the, this cultivator was coupled. Um, this is a cultivator from Horsch, the Tiger 4MT, if uh, anybody's interested in more details about that cultivator. And we are showing at 37 working hours. So on, on the figure on the left, you would see the number of control elements on the uh, y-axis. So in sum, we, I'll do the math for you. We uh, locked 64. If you, if you uh, add up all the bars, you would come up with 64 control elements. And on the x-axis, you see the classes for number of operator inputs. So there is a, a zero class. Um, so 16 control elements hasn't been, haven't been uh, controlled at all. Uh, 18 have been controlled one to 10 times uh, in that seven, uh, 37 uh, working hours and so on and so on. On, on the right side, um, you see a heat map. We also um, 
um, uh, made uh, with that measurement data. Um, so for each control element on the heat map, we have the number for the control inputs, and based on that number for the control inputs, we uh, colored um, the control elements. And then you would see that the that the control armrest has a very dense, a high number of control inputs towards the joystick on the very left, uh, the front <laughs> left edge of the control armrest, which makes sense because this is for the from a physical uh, physical ergonomics way. This is the best position for your hand arm system. So this is a good thing. Um, another motivation that came out of this uh, measurement uh, data was um, that there are a lot of control elements that are uh, not used. For example, 16 out of 40, 64 control elements are not used, and there is a lot of control elements that are used in a very with a very low frequency. Um, so this also was a support or a motivation to have control elements and on the armrest that can change the function that is linked to the control armrest because you don't need all that control elements all the time. So how did we start in getting at the shape um, and the layout of that armrest? On the very left, you see a picture with very rough sections um, on that control, um, on that um, future control armrest. And for each operating scenario, we had layers. So we'd made the, on, a, on a plank sheet of paper, um, we put um, all the functionality of the operating scenario um, based on the frequency. So the higher the frequency, the, the more on the very left uh, front edge the function was placed, um, and so on and so on for each operating scenario. Then the second thing we started modeling um, how could um, a control element look like um, to control that function? And then the third step you see on the column on the right, uh, we started with the clay modeling, you know, maybe clay modeling from passenger car design modeling. Um, so this was the first um, ergonomic draft um, of that control armrest. And then we, we've been um, getting digital. We did a scan, a 3D scan of that clay model, and then from the 3D scan, we did a first um, CAD model of that control armrest, and then going back to uh, reality, so to say, we did a print. Uh, this print was empty; it was just the the the, sh uh, the shape. There was no electronics in it um, to have a rough um, idea of how does it feel to sit in the tractor and touch the armrest, uh, push the push the control elements, and then we find out that there are second uh, two actually two um, areas that are don't fit very well. So we changed them in another iteration st step. And then we came up with this final design. Maybe if you already seen it before. Um, so this is the result for our uh, ESA multifunctional adaptive armrest. And in this, uh, the upcoming slides, I'm going to show you some neat um, features of that armrest. So first feature is uh, based on the adaptivity feature position. You see three rollers. Uh, you see six rollers that can change uh, in between uh, three positions. And in position one, for example, the, the control element for the hydraulics, position one, there is a button and then there is the, the thumb switch uh, for the hydraulic control, uh, for the hydraulic valve control. It co can go up and down. In position two, it can go back and forth. And in position three, it isn't there at all. So there's just a button. Um, so this is adaptivity features position. Um, if you remember the, the unfolding and folding of the wings of the cultivator, you could imagine position one of one roller. And then you have, um, I'm going to show you that in the second slide, in the slide after this slide, the symbol for the, for the cultivator. And then you have, have the control element going up for um, folding the cultivator and the control, control element going down for unfolding the, uh, the, um, the cultivator. Um, so, and then there is an additi additivity feature, it's called availability. Um, you see that joystick on the left side, this joystick has four different positions. It can be either gone completely because we don't need it. Um, in the second position, it can be there with just one rotary switch. Uh, we use this rotary switch as um, um, opening or closing the trailing axle of a trailer that is coupled on the back of a tractor. If you if you see trailers coupled on the back of the tractor, if they have two axes, um, uh, usually the the say the, the the second axis on the back um, can be opened to steer 
It's like it's the same. It's the same system you would know from a shopping cart of a supermarket. It steers if you have uh, if you have very sharp turns on the street, and you sometimes. But you sometimes. So you sometimes need to open um, this trailing axle, for example, also in a roundabout. Sometimes you also need to close it. Uh, for example, if you go very fast on the road, if you're on a steep hill, if you're if you're wherever you are. Um, and so uh, we thought of having this like uh, um, the lid of a bottle. So if you close the lid of the bottle, you turn it to the right, and if you open it, you would turn it to the left, and that's what we also can do uh, with that uh, rotary switch in position one of that joystick. Because if you imagine the rollers again, I showed you before, um, would you would you press it downwards or upwards or forward or back to open or close the trailing axle? So this is more intuitive to close or to open something. Then we have the position three with two rotary switches, and then we have position four with even a joystick functionality. So we have a full functionality of a joystick and two rotary switches um, that come up with that joystick on the very right. Um, for example, position four you could use for front load, front loader work. Um, you have a full joystick. You have even a third hydraulic circle uh, circuit, and you may maybe use the. Um, second rotary switch for changing direction uh, to don't need um, to uh, change because one hand you would have the, the uh, left hand on the steering wheel and you would just have the right hand on this joystick all the time and if you do front loading uh, you, need change the, you need to change direction uh, very often so it's very handy to have that change of direction on that joystick also. Um, then I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the adaptivity feature graphics and um, color. Here, for example, that's the um, that's the example of a manual tanker. Uh, you would not see hydraulic circuit one, th uh, two, three, four, and so on, uh, but you rather see um, um, uh, lifting or lowering the shoes, the shoes of the hydraulic manual tanker. You would uh, extending or uh, um, retracting or extending the boom of the hydraulic menu tanker you would uh, see a symbol for turning on the pump of the menu tanker you would see a symbol for lowering or lifting the, the support leg of the menu tanker and so on so it's not a um, technology anymore like hydraulics but the function that you actually control and then we have the adaptivity feature linked uh, function. Um, so um, based on the implement that is actually coupled on the back of the tractor, uh, you can change from work uh, mode to road mode. Um, if you're familiar with driving a tractor, you would know that if you, if you come to a street or if you come from the street to the field that you need to um, deactivate or activate a, a big bunch of functions. And if you go back from the field to the road, you need to deactivate maybe the three-point hitch, the hydraulics, the, the automatic guiding steering system, and whatever. And based on the coupled implement, these, uh, these bunch or these uh, group of function differs. So for example, if you have a manual tanker coupled to the tractor, you don't need to activate or deactivate the three-point hitch. Um, but uh, so if you would go from uh, work uh, from road to work, it would not activate the three-point hitch when there is a manual tanker coupled to the tractor. But if there is, for example, I don't know, um, uh, a cultivator, a smaller cultivator coupled to the tractor with a three-point hitch, and if it can go to the field, it would activate um, the three-point hitch because it knows that there is a um, cultivator coupled that needs to have the uh, three-point hitch enabled to um, use it in the field. And now I'm going to show you a little uh, video clip from the um, armrest um, booting, booting to a scenario. You would see the joystick to come up to also have the proof. That's the example of the menu tanker to have the proof that it actually works. And to even more proof that it actually works, I've got a second video. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Um, this is, uh, I need to change. Okay, a second video where this armrest is in use. We fully control the tractor with an armrest in baling, um, straw baling. Um, and the tractor is completely controlled. So this beep is just, there's a bale coming out of the bale on the back, it's not an arrow message. Um, and we fully control the tractor uh, with that armrest. And now looking towards the sweat and the swan uh, and the sun, I'm going to finish that talk about our ESA project where I'm show I showed you the idea. Uh,